Hi, welcome to Weekend Review, where we look at some of the headlines making news and some of the stories we have coming up in the uh, next few days. I'm joined today here, uh, I'm Phil O'Connor, the Live Enterprise Director, and I'm joined today by reporter uh, Nolan Clay, business editor Don Mekoy, and our sports editor Ryan Sharp. So, hey, good morning, everybody. How's it going? Happy Friday. Um, so, Nolan, we've had some news from the criminal justice system this week, uh, including on Alton Nolan, uh, the man who was accused or I guess has pleaded guilty to the beheading in the Moore food plant. What's the latest on that one? Well, uh, we we're going to have a sentencing this week. The ju- he wants the death penalty, and the judge was going to go through the process of deciding whether there were uh, aggravating uh, factors that warranted the death penalty. She just can't sign a piece of paper and say, okay. Uh, we're going to have uh, witnesses, including the uh, lady who almost was beheaded, uh, and others at the plant testify. But the defense, his defense attorneys, even though the, even though the guy wants the death penalty, his defense attorneys are kind of working against him, and they're saying that he was uh, mentally ill, and they had an expert who testified a week ago to that uh, fact, and another expert that was called by the prosecution said, no, he's okay. This is just his personality, and he doesn't want to cooperate. So the judge uh, had to decide if she could accept the guilty plea, whether he did it knowingly or not, and she decided that she didn't have enough information. So she's ordered him sent to Vanita for further testing on his mental competency to see if he really is mentally uh, well enough to uh, knowingly enter a guilty plea. Yeah, and I don't know if you know the answer to this, but I'm curious. You know, do. Is it unusual for somebody who says, I, I would like the death penalty, to have somebody step in and say, well, wait a minute, we don't actually think he should get the death penalty? I mean, is that, that especially from his own defense attorneys? No, I mean, they're, they're, they're court appointed, and it's, uh, it's unusual, yes, that somebody wants the death penalty. That's the most unusual thing. That the defense attorneys will, who most of the times, they're philosophically opposed to the death penalty. But they're trying to raise legal issues that they have to raise. I mean, there is some question about whether he is mentally ill or mentally competent. I mean, he he will start talking and then go off on a tangent, never come back to what he was saying. Now, a lot of us go off on tangents, but he never comes back. He uh, is a Muslim convert, but he doesn't really, uh, according to this one expert, doesn't really uh, believe like most Muslims do. He's kind of made it up as he goes. Uh, he does have some uh, mental. Uh, he's not as uh, he's not mentally retarded, but he's not, uh, you know, a hundred percent. So they're just doing what they're supposed to do, even though it's uh, so- somewhat frustrating. So we've had some other news this week. Uh, a local union president in some hot water. Yes, uh, uh, this uh, gentleman, Mr. Bryles, he's been the longtime president of the union that represents municipal employees of uh, Oklahoma City and he's been under investigation for a while. At first it was a sexual assault investigation and they had a sex crimes detective looking at him and the sex crime detective reports and search warrants and an arrest warrant affidavit that, uh, hey, as we looked into him, everybody was telling us, hey, he's embezzling. Uh, we, we, we had to take the check and hide the check checks of the union from him and so they started looking into that. They got the U.S. Labor Department to help them, and they believe that he's embezzled close to fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars, apparently to support some kind of basketball organization that he has. But he also had some personal expenses in there as well. Oh in terms yeah, of he, gifts for his wife, gifts and, for his wife, uh, tires. Even though he gets mileage and uh, 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 a personal legal bill that the attorney says that wasn't anything to do with the union. It was me representing him in his personal matter. And he was taken into custody this week, right? He was. He's not. It's it's an arrest warrant so far. He's not been charged yet. But he was arrested. He's been released. And uh, we'll see where it goes from here. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that one. So, Ryan, a big weekend for high school football in Oklahoma. We're back on the gridiron, right? Yeah, it's that time of year. Uh, a lot of teams have their first round of scrimmages this week. Um, you know, next week is that week zero that they started last week where teams can actually add a non-district game. Um, but this week, um, just about everybody in the state um, is playing their first round of scrimmages. So you've had two weeks of practices in the hot sun, and now it's actually cooled off a little bit, so it's not as bad. Um, so they have scrimmages this weekend. Uh, next weekend is week zero. 
Talk a little bit about our high school sports coverage, especially of football and what, what our readers can expect. We're about a week out from having our high school football preview um, in the paper. It comes out the 31st. And of course, that'll have the usual stuff. So uh, preseason rankings for every class, uh, kind of a line on every team in the state, um, schedules for every team in the state. Um, and so and then that week is also the week of week zero. So you've got more games coming that week. And then week one is actually two weeks away. Right. Um, so we're getting right on top of it. Great. And I've been following our Super 30, been reading that, uh, catching up on some of the great players in the in the state. And This is a good year for high school football in Oklahoma. There's some pretty top-level talent um, coming out of Oklahoma this year. Um, a lot of those guys um, already have, I mean, 10, 20 Division One offers. Um, and so we'll be updating that as the season goes, too. Great. Uh, also supposed to be a big year for uh, some team that's pretty popular with a couple guys at this table, I understand, for <laughs> OU. Uh, big changes at the stadium this year. What can what can uh, fans expect when they go to Gaylord Stadium? They're this year? in the middle of about $160 million uh, renovation of the south end zone. Um, about half of it will be done uh, before the season opener in a couple or the home opener in a couple weeks. Um, everything that fans will t will use, so seating restrooms, concession areas, uh, the new loge boxes, new luxury seating in the south end zone will be completed. Um, in addition to the new uh, mega uh, jumbotron um, that they put up uh, on the south end zone. Everything on the inside of the stadium will probably probably be another year. So the weight room, the locker room, coaches' offices, team meeting rooms, things like that will be next season before they get to start using that. Great. Don, what are you looking forward to most in the new stadium? Uh, you know, I just, I'm there for the football. <laughs> Okay. I, I like the quarterback a lot. Okay. <laughs> Nolan? Well, I think it will be uh, cool that it's enclosed and it will be, although the, the, from what I understand, the seating capacity isn't going up that much. No, it stays almost exactly the same. But it will be enclosed, it will be louder, and I think it will be more intimidating for uh, the OU's opponents, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah, and part of that new scoreboard uh, is a new uh, audio package that comes with it. And their goal was to make it to where it's uh, easy, easily or easier heard on the other side of the stadium. Um, you know, we get so far away from those things and it gets mumbled and uh, you can't really understand what's going on. But that thing apparently is crisp and clear as far as you can get away from it. And plus, uh, it's been a little bit, uh, been out there the last couple of days, uh, that thing has been lit up at night uh, and you can see it from 30 miles away, um, the glow of that uh, jumbotron from the stadium. If anything can change a game day experience in a stadium besides a good team, it is a giant video board like that. I don't know. I mean, a Jerry World and stuff. I mean, you can go to that game. You can never look at the field. I mean, it's the, the video board is so much more enticing almost than, you know, seeing the small guys down on the field. So it, it give a whole new look to the game and for people. And this is the second, second biggest one in college football um, behind only Auburn. So it's huge. Okay. Well, you don't realize how, how big it is until you go to some other stadium like Tulsa where it's like a mm – -hmm really small. So not only is Don a sports expert, he's also our resident art expert. So hey. Don, talk to us. Uh, we've got this issue going on with the giant mural recently painted on a film row building and I guess it's causing some heartburn at City Hall. Right, it, there's, a, there's a mural in the Paramount building and, and film row has, it's called film row because it used to be where all the movies came in for this whole region and, and, and it has a history of that. And uh, uh, they painted a mural. Uh, the people, the owners of the building, hired an artist to paint a mural, which a lot of people really like. And it's got uh, jazz guitarist Charlie Christian on it, and, and actress Joan Crawford, and Oklahoma's favorite son Woody Guthrie. It, and people like it. Unfortunately, when they hired this guy, they never got a permit from the city to do this. So now the uh, city uh, officials have said, "Listen, you need to come up with some ideas." for ways to remove parts of that mural uh, because it's improper and it also covered up some historic paint that it was kind of a what they call a ghost sign of the original on the original property. Now the owner says, listen, I, I, I was concerned about that ghost sign and I looked at ways of trying to rehabilitate that and trying to do something to, to draw attention to that and it just wasn't practical. So she came up with this mural. Now on, on the another side of the building, on what was a blank wall, the, the same artist painted a huge mural of Stephen Adams, which even one of the city officials said, I think that's really cool. <laughs> we shouldn't do anything to that. Well, it, it's just an interesting case. You do have to get a permit. I mean, that's the rule, and they didn't get a permit. So this appears to be the penalty that's been enforced. 
Uh, but at the same time, nearly everyone says, I like the mural, and, mm -hmm. it's, and it's really cool. Well, and it's interesting that you know, I think the issue of the ghost uh, sign or whatever, you know, how long is the obligation there to maintain the ghost sign or whatever, which is obviously fading and deteriorating as time goes by. And it's like you say, it's a very, the new artwork is very striking. I mean, it really changes sort of the nature of that district in a lot of ways. I mean, it really puts a sort of a vibrancy down there on, you know, a lot of brick kind of plain looking brick buildings in yep. a lot of ways. So and, and Film Row is really is just really turning over. I mean with twenty one C and all these other and there's there's things coming and there's things that have been established there. And that area just a little bit west of the central business district, which used to be I mean it was Skid Row. Right. Uh, has become a very vibrant area. And you've got to follow the rules. Yeah. So, okay, finally, oil exports. So America is back in the business of shipping oil overseas. Yeah, for years you couldn't export American oil. It was against it was against the rules. You couldn't do it. This earlier this year they changed the rule, and and our own Harold Ham at Continental Resources was one of the driving forces about getting that that changed. And there there were some compromises in Congress, and they got it so we could do it. So our uh, Adam Wilmoth took a look at you know where's our oil going now, and, and it's going to 17 different countries. It's kind of interesting. Most of it goes to Canada. Uh, but uh, it goes to a lot of other interesting places. It goes to places like Israel, and it goes to China. Uh, it's not, I mean, we're not talking about huge quantities of oil, but just the fact that they're loading up American oil and sh shipping it to other countries is interesting. And, there, and there's kind of an irony here. You know, I, you've heard me use the term before saying that oil is a fungible awesome. commodity. I was hoping we would get to that. Th there today. is one aspect of oil that's not fungible, that it's not all the same, in that our refineries in the United States are really set up to, to use the heavy sulfurous oil that is produced in other parts of the world. The refineries in places like Europe are more, uh, more accustomed or, or better operate better, more efficiently if they get the lighter, sweeter oil like it's produced in the United States. So it makes a certain amount of sense and you can get a better price in some cases by shipping that oil overseas to have it uh, refined in these refineries that prefer the kind of oil that we produce. That's interesting because so now uh, our largest uh, export, or, uh, largest company, uh, country we export to is Canada. Mm -hmm. That's also the largest country that we import from, isn't it? Right. So, yeah. Okay. Well, and you find that a lot with imports and exports. I mean, Canada's Oklahoma's biggest uh, foreign, you know, importer and, and exporter. Interesting. Okay, great. All right, well, listen, that's the kind of information you can only get here at The Oklahoman. Uh, we have it on our website every day at newsok.com. We have it in the newspaper every day, too. Pick up a paper. Check us out online. This is the great kind of stuff you'll find there. Thanks for joining me, guys. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for joining us as well. We'll see you again soon, too.